Roberts is the author of the Mastering Probability newsletter, fantastic newsletter you've heard me speak endlessly about. And then he is also the host of the Trader's Edge on at 11 a.m. Eastern time every day that the market is open right here on Tiger Financial News Network. Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jacob. How about yourself today? Doing well, Steve. It was it was good to meet you this weekend. It was good to see yeah. you at the uh, the celebration of life, and yeah, it was fantastic. No, same here. It was uh, I think it uh, was a it was a beautiful ceremony, uh, for sure. You know, out at the National Cemetery, if folks have never been to the National Cemetery, they, they just simply put on a, a really wonderful service out there. They do so well attended. They you do. know, I think Tom would be he'd be like. Oh my God! You'd be elated, um, absolutely. Right? I mean, we had hundreds of cars there. It seemed like it was unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> you know, so just uh, you know, it just shows you how many people uh, Tom has you know seriously touched. Yeah, uh, for sure. You know, and then the uh, celebration of life party afterwards. You know, uh, just just everybody that's really been in uh, Tom's life for everybody that could get down for it. So it's great to see you there as well. Yeah, and um, um, it, it, it's so. Normally, I have something prepared, but sure. and and you know those folks that listen to my show, as you said, it's on eleven o'clock. You know, I off I almost every day will say that everything in life is happening for us, um, not to us, and and I absolutely live by that principle. Uh, where I always have struggled with that is in death, because how can somebody's death? really be happening for us right you know what i mean so but because i believe in that like when david white passed away yes uh, when he passed away i immediately said okay i'm gonna get make sure that my my life is my health i should say not my life but my health you know is in good order and so i i went on a, a one meal a day uh, diet got rid of a bunch of uh, got rid of all the medications i was taking it was really wonderful until i was struggling this year june to september with some other you know rsv and covid and all that kind of stuff so sure. uh, the the first thing i'll do with regard to tom's uh, passing is uh, just simply go out there get everything checked you know everything possible checked out there just to, if there is a problem we want to catch it early so Absolutely. uh you know so that's been that's been my vote motivation i just got back from an echo scan uh for my cardiologist oh, yeah. and i wasn't sure if i was going to be back in time to do a show so i didn't get the normal presentation that i would do done but that doesn't mean we're not going to learn some things out here right so uh, if we can yeah, if we can let's get to it um and what i want to start with is i'm going to start with the weekly time frame charts i showed this this morning uh, during today's show and this is really important because people are trying to understand is the move real when is it going to peter out all those kinds of things and what's really important here is I'm just a technical trader sure. and you know still no software that I know of that I can click on a candle and know what the highlights of the day were what geopolitical events might have been taking uh, uh, take you know taking place and as I've gone through charts uh, that have Dow data goes back to the 1860s the patterns just they're there and they work um, they they also fail, but the majority of the time, the patterns that I use will work. And one of those patterns, I, there's two patterns here I'll refer to. One's a TD9 count, and the other's a Rose Mintum indicator signal. Both the the uh, the uh, Dow Cash, we, we're looking at the weekly indices. We're looking at the cash indices. And then the trading week of October 18th, uh, the TD9 count pattern was uh, confirmed. And the following week, a Rose Mintum indicator pattern. Those have been in place until last week. And those were negated and taken out. When you negate those patterns in really short order out there, with just a couple weeks' time. It tells us about a strong upward momentum move. That's for the Dow. If we take a look at the S&P 500, it also negated the same two patterns out there. Again, it did that last week. What the market, what the signals, what the technicals are telling us, whether we want to believe them or not, I do believe them, is that price wants to move higher. That doesn't mean we don't have jostling back and forth. Heck, we think we opened up the market today and, uh, and the futures may have been down or some of the futures were down. Uh, the Russell 2000 has negated topping signals. The only pattern that has Hasn't really the only instrument I should say that hasn't negated a topping signal is the semiconductor index, mm -hmm. and it has me scratching my head just a little bit out here. We haven't even gotten back to its highs out there, so it's just a. But other than the semis out there, all of the other indices have negated really significant uh, topping patterns, and in many instances, price never even really got back to a level of support to uh, test and reject that. So that's the first thing that I wanted to share with folks. Now the question is, where might be price going? I'm just going to focus on the uh, Dow. I'm going to switch back to my black background screen. So you need to be my auditor. Make sure that's what shows up. <laughs> Fantastic. Oftentimes, 
<laughs> Oftentimes I think I'm doing that. I'm talking about that, and then boom, you know, people are saying, "Well, that's nice, Stevie, but you know, show me the screen." Now here's the screen. We're going to take a look. Well, okay, so this is one thing we're going to take a look at, yep. and that is how is the Dow trading in major currencies? And that's what this chart does. So we know we're at a new all-time high today in terms of dollars, but guess what? We're in terms we're in a new all-time highs today in terms of every major currency. When I say major currency, I'm referring to euros, yen, Australian dollar, Swedish krona, Great British pound, Swiss franc, Chinese yuan, and a Canadian loonie. Real bull markets, and this is important, so we just took a look at weekly charts that had negated their signals out there. The real bull markets are when an instrument that you're trading is moving higher in every major currency. You know, maybe you've got a cousin, Jacob, over in uh, in Japan. They're thinking in terms of yen, not right. really thinking in terms of dollars. Maybe you've got a, another relative that's over in Europe. They're thinking in terms of either euros or pounds uh, out there. And so when these are moving all at uh, in the same direction at new all-time highs, it tells you that this is a very strong bull market. Now, where is it that uh, the Dow might be headed to? I'm going to pull out a chart here. This is for the Dow. This is a monthly time. Time frame. So I'm giving you a bigger picture. I'm not saying this is headed there tomorrow. First, I've drawn in here an A to B equals CD pattern, you know, brought to us by Tom, Larry Pesavento, H.M. Gartley. The one to one monthly A to B equals CD pattern inside the Dow will get us up to the 47,399 level. If somebody's asking me, is that a projection? Absolutely, it's a projection. Now, I can't guarantee it's going to get there, but that's the projection of the A to B equals CD pattern. These horizontal lines on my screen, those are referred to as horizontal trading ranges. They're established by identifying the largest number of opens or closes that occur at a price level. Once you identify, and I have this all electronically set up, and once you figure out where the first largest number of of incidents are and then the second, that gives you your horizontal trading range. And once you have that dollar value, it just simply is added to the upside or to the downside. And they oftentimes act as magnets. Uh, I know you're gonna have Basil on, he'll talk about magnets, I'm sure. Well, the next magnet to the upside is uh, 46,367. So I would say the Dow is like Headed to 46,367 to 47,399. That doesn't mean there won't be any pit stops out there, but I just want to be able to give folks a take a look at that. Now, you mentioned the U.S. dollar index. We take a look at the U.S. dollar index. It's trading up against this a weekly chart, a monthly chart on the lower left out here, and you can see we're up against where others where we've gotten to before, and that's at the 105.57 level. So even though it's a monthly time frame chart, it really is worth paying attention to out there. Um, I also wanted to take a look at gold. So so as we close out the show, I'm going to switch back to my other screens out there. Sure. Again, you get out of me, make sure we see some white screens out here. Uh, so I'll have those up momentarily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go take a look at uh, gold. And we're going to do this. Um, how am I going to do this? I'm going to do this this way. Mm, shoot. I, what I'm going to what I want to share with folks is and I didn't show the weekly time frame for gold. I should have. And the reason that I should have is because what gold did today is it got back to the bottom of its weekly profile. The number of that weekly profile is 261840. Our low today 261710 uh, uh 261710. And as long as that weekly profile holds of 2618, we've likely formed at least a short-term bottom. Today is going to be bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern out there. And that says we likely get a confirmed TD9 count pattern tomorrow, a completed pattern on Wednesday. Now, when we get the daily time frame that says we might have a bottom, we look to the intraday charts out here, we look for bottom patterns, we've got them all across the board except for the five-hour time frame chart. Now, if folks turn into my show tomorrow, which is normally at 11, but I'll be recording from eight to nine, I'll follow back up on gold and the TD9 count pattern. It's really worth knowing out there. So that's all I've got for you today, Jacob. I uh, hope that helped. Steve, and, uh, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m., all right? Or, uh, well, 8 a.m. tomorrow. 8 a.m. tomorrow. See you then, okay. Steve. Thanks, Jacob. Take care. Folks, stay there. We'll be right back. <laughs>